did a fantastic job. You know, coming off your second year into this year, people were unsure what to expect. Really defensively, your team locked down. And I watched you several times. We're up here in the Northeast. Watched you several times throughout the year. The non-conference schedule really battled through and, and were hot at the end of the regular season there with several big wins. Talk about that. Your turnover percentage, 24th best in the country. You were number one in offensive and defensive rebounding within the SEC. And what was really impressive, Coach, held opponents to 45.8% from inside the arc. Just a commitment, I think, for the Rebels to defense. Well, well it was. We, we were challenged a little bit, Mike, offensively. And so we had to kind of play not the way we really wanted to play offensively, but our 1-3-1 our one, one, back to our 2-3 zone that we've kind of been known for for the last 12 or 13 years, which was really terrific in our league. And, you know, we were. We were we were undefeated against top 15 teams and, you know, beat Kentucky and Tennessee, Auburn a couple times, Missouri a couple times, and they were ranked. And so I was really proud of it. We thought we were an NCAA tournament team. You know, during that COVID, you know, we didn't get a chance to play uh, Memphis. Our MTE got canceled like some teams did. So, you know, but it's one of those things where number one seed in the NIT and, that's not where we want to be, but uh, but we were. I was, I was proud of our team and some of the things they battled through. I've been saying this to all the coaches. Just talked to John Becker up in Vermont the other day. The transfer portal, it taketh and it giveth away. Some transfers leaving the program, but some great guys coming in. Ty Fagan coming in from Georgia. Nysir Brooks, 6'11", 240 coming in from Miami. And, and Jamin Brakefield from Duke. So the transfer portal, I would think, is something everyone's had to adjust to, but you have some real quality players coming in. You know, we do. We feel really good. You know, we got three guys from Power 5 teams. And it's like I tell our fan base, I said, fan bases around America are going to be frustrated if you concentrate on the guys you lose and not concentrate on the guys you get. Because yeah. it's just going to be a part of, I don't care if you're at Carolina, Kentucky, UCLA, or Ole Miss. It's just going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a part of the fabric of college athletics as we go forward. We're all going to have to navigate it and understand that there's going to be ever-changing rosters and turnover, and that's just a part of, of what's fixing to happen. I, I do think it'll maybe settle in in a couple of years because I do think people are going to find out there's, I hate it for these guys. There's going to be players that aren't going to have places to go that are in the portal still, and there's not enough spots available or going to really drop down a level. And so maybe in a couple of years it'll balance out as, as people will kind of see the process you know, the other guys are going through. Let's look at your recruits coming in. Best recruiting class you've had here at Ole Miss by, by the rankings. Just some amazing players coming in. Let's start with Deshaun Ruffin, four-star recruit coach, top player in Mississippi. Yeah, you know, he's a McDonald All-American, our first at Ole Miss. Uh, I think he's the most electric kind of score in that class from 21. Uh, you know, 5'9", 165 pounds, but can really pass it. He's had a really good summer, and I think the people here are going to love watching him play. What do you do, Coach? Other play, you got James White coming in, Eric Vanderheijen, if I'm saying that right, uh, Grant Slatten. How do you mix them? Because you have a pretty good balance now, about, I think, five or six players returning, six new guys coming in. Have they been working in the offseason here? How do you sort of assimilate this as you get ready to, to head into the season? Yeah, you know, Mike, I, I do. I like our balance. You know, we got we got six guys returning. we got three power five uh, transfers. we got four freshmen. So I, I do like our balance on our team. Uh, the four freshmen have done well. I mean, they, they're going through an adjustment of, you know, the lifting. And then we haven't hit the grind yet. But in the summer, just the structure. And they're facing the competition and pace of play, which just, you know, escalates high in our league for sure. Uh, but, but I love our group. It's our most complete roster. We've had some really good players here, some good teams, but I think it's our most complete uh, roster. It's our best shooting roster, and uh, they've been great. They did great in school. I think a 3.6 summer school, so it's been really good. How do you approach non-conference? You have some big games here in the non-conference. You're going down to, to playing in Charleston for a while. Uh, you're going to host Kansas State in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. What's your philosophy here with non-conference, and, and, and give us a preview of the non-conference schedule this year for Ole Miss. Yeah, you know, it's the first time I've ever coached. We probably played more road games than anybody in America when I was at middle. And not a lot of people were, were, were wanting to play us. And but we don't, we do not play a true road game. Now, our competition is good. We've got Memphis and Dayton at home, which is great. Big 12 SEC Challenge, K State at home. 
Uh, we're playing in the, the one-day event in Atlanta at the Hawks. We play Western Kentucky. I think LSU, Auburn, Clemson, Georgia Tech's involved in that. And then the Charleston Classic open up with Marquette. West Virginia is on your same side. So uh, I love the opportunities. I mean, I just think, uh, you know, obviously our league is terrific, uh, but you still have to get challenged. But then, you know, you got to have a balance of, you know, maybe five guarantee games at home against good competition, which it is. And so I love our non-conference schedule. I think it's going to be uh, full of unbelievable opportunities.